Hi, I'm Dr. Jesse Schultz, physical therapist in McGuanago, Wisconsin. Today I'm going to be showing you how to treat your hip AD ductors, specifically the AD ductor magnus, more often than not, also the hamstrings. Now, I find that these muscles can limit knee straightening motion, whether it be actively and or passively. These muscles tie into your pelvic floor. They also kind of tie into your core muscles a little bit as well. If these muscles are tight, they can limit a lot of different physical mobility things that you might want to do um, better. So what I'm going to show you is kind of a small little treatment program that generally is very safe um, to basically get these muscles to relax so that you can live your life a little bit better. Now, with anything, there's always some risk involved with it. With that said, the reason I'm making this video is for my patients to be able to help themselves if I ran out of a little bit of time in the clinic. So if you are not sure if you have these problems uh, and this might be of something for you that you might benefit from, consult with the physical therapist, see if they agree with this concept for you because you may have similar symptoms, but it might not be the right treatment strategy. Now, rarely, is this going to be something that might cause soreness or bruising, but every now and then someone might have some bruising from the first part of this, and that is a trigger point release. So the hip AD ductors are the muscles that live on the inner part of your thigh. They primarily bring your leg towards the middle with force, which helps you with walking. Also, they rotate your leg in helps you with stability for different activities. Now, uh, these muscles work kind of along with the hamstrings, specifically the adductor magnus, which is a large muscle in this area. And uh, if the hamstrings aren't working very well, typically it seems like the adductor magnus muscle seems to try to compensate for it and it tightens up and it really limits a lot of different things that our body can do. So what we can do is hold 30 seconds of pressure on the muscle to help it relax in some tender spots that we're going to find. And then follow it up with some stretching. So uh, if you just do this by itself, many times you should get immediate relief. Now how long it lasts for is different depending upon your activity level and your strength and um, whether this is something chronic for you or something fresh uh, or acute. So what I'm going to show you is kind of a few other exercises to do along with this. So. The adductor magnus muscle is not on the back part of your thigh, it's not on the inner part of your thigh, it's kind of in that little corner between the two. So if you wear shorts, which I'd recommend for this, you pull up your shorts leg and you find something that's got a hook on it like this. Now, there are theracanes and back knobbers and all sorts of trigger point release tools that you can use for this, but something that's got a hook on it, whether it's this wide or wider, usually works very well. Now, um, you do want to make sure that this and this are parallel to one another. If the cane, if you do decide to use a cane, hooks back on itself a little bit, it doesn't work the same. If you've got an ergonomic grip on your cane where it kind of comes off flat at the top, it does not work very well either. You could use it with your, or you could do this with your hands and no tools if you wanted to, but you have to have very strong hands for that, but it is possible. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your leg, lift it up, and rest it down on top of the point of the cane. Now, if you did this and you said, holy schmoly, that really hurts, you are on a trigger point, and this is gonna be the first spot that you're gonna treat. If you said this is not very uncomfortable at all, either you're misdiagnosed or we need to find a different spot. So, we're gonna move the cane down a little bit, and I find a much better spot than the other one I was just on, even though the other spot I was on before was actually a trigger point. So once you find a spot, you're going to keep your leg relaxed and keep it relaxed for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds is up, and I want to make sure you heard that, after 30 seconds, then what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the muscle, or specifically the spot of the muscle. So what you're going to do is you're going to angle or kind of pull or rotate the cane a little bit towards you so you feel a little bit of a stretch. And what you're then going to do is you're going to straighten the leg and you're going to do about five or six slow kicks. You can do more if you would like to, but you're going to feel 
that tension building at that spot where you just shut it down so that this muscle can function a little bit better. Now, there's only one area on your thigh that has kind of, we'll say, sensitivity or danger associated with it, where I'm talking about it right now, and that is the middle of the back of your thigh. That's where your sciatic nerve is. You don't want to be directly over that. Otherwise, this is a very safe, safe technique to do. You can kind of be in the right ballpark and it'll probably still help you out. But anything on the inner part of your thigh that is tender is fair game. Even if you're not on the adductor magnus, but you're on the hamstrings, it's still probably gonna help. And if it's tender and tight, it's something that's not functioning normally for you either. But as many spots as you can find from kind of a few inches above the knee crease to right below the hip crease here by your buttock is gonna be fair game for this. If you find you feel a lot better after this, but not great, one of two things is the case. You either have something else going on or you might need to exercise those muscles or the muscles around the area a little bit more. So what you could try also is using the cane on the outer half of your thigh, again, staying away from that sciatic nerve and basically relaxing the leg onto a tender spot for 30 seconds, then putting a little twist or rotation or a stretch in that tissue as you straighten your leg up. Now, the first time I did this sort of technique was very, very, very uncomfortable to the point where I could barely relax my leg all the way. If you cannot relax your leg all the way, you might aggravate something else. So what I'd recommend is, if you cannot let your leg fully down on the cane or whatever you use for this, whether it be a back knobber or a theracane or whatever you choose to use, then use something like a pillow or a little block or a step, something underneath your foot to give it a little bit of support so it doesn't have to hang all the way down if you can't tolerate all that pressure. Now, generally this is gonna be something that's gonna be helpful to at least do at least once, usually twice per day for a couple weeks until those other exercises kind of take over for it. So, any spots on the back of the thigh that are tender are fair game for this. Now, now that you've basically unhandicapped your body and shut down all those muscles that now other muscles should be able to function better from all that tension balancing stuff you just did. Now what we can do is strengthen the opposite muscle on the side of the hip and also the hamstrings. So to strengthen the muscle on the outside of the hip, the gluteus medius muscle, what you can do is lay on your side and lift your leg on a diagonal up and back behind you. And as you're doing this, try to rotate your toes up towards the ceiling. Now, when you're doing this, it is very easy to keep the leg in front of the body and not go behind the body. And a lot of people tend to go out to the side and then back. And that's not gonna really target this muscle either. You wanna move on a diagonal, about 45 degrees or so, out and back. And again, if you can rotate the toes away from your body, that would be the best. Your goal should be able to do 20 of these per side, three sets, two to three days per week. That will get these muscles stronger for you. You should be able to easily do 20 of these. It is not all that hard if these muscles are healthy to do that many. So I'd strongly encourage you to try to go for that goal. Now, there's another exercise that you can do to basically help get these muscles working more effectively. Now, for that, what you'll need is some sort of resistance band. You can tie that band around your ankles or around your knees if you prefer. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand up, you're gonna clench one butt cheek here as you move the other leg into the resistance of the band, out to the side a little bit, and then back. Then you clench this muscle here to move your leg out, the other leg out to the side a little bit and come on back. You always want to alternate legs. So clench, move one leg, clench, move the other leg. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, you can see I was shifting my weight a little bit. Now the goal for these muscles is to have this hold everything still. And if you're trying as hard as you can to clench this muscle on the side of your hip and move the other leg out to the side and you see a little wiggle, whether it's a hip shifting, shoulders turning or something, you need to hold on to something for balance. What works out very well for this is a kitchen sink 
or maybe the bathroom sink because then you have that mirror that you can also see if something's moving a little bit. But you want to go for absolute perfection of form with this. And I'd recommend you do this for about three to five minutes if you can. But again, alternating, squeeze, don't let anything move, and then move the other leg, and then squeeze here and move the other leg. Your goal is not to necessarily eventually do this without any hand support. Your goal is to do it well for our three to five minutes, and I'd recommend that about three to five days per week. Now, so with that program, we shut down all these muscles. They're relaxed, they're working better. These muscles can function better. We're getting them stronger now, and we're getting them to kick in more. Now, how do we strengthen your hamstrings, the other aspect of all this? So, one easy way to do this, you get a ball. Now, this is a Swiss ball, 55 centimeters. Technically, you could get a bigger one if you wanted to, or a smaller one if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. If you do not have one of these balls, and you don't want to get one of these balls, even though I should only set you back about $35 at the very most, and that's if you're paying for a brand name one, um, which is not necessary for this, uh, you could use paper plates. And I'm going to explain what you're going to do. You're going to line your back with your feet up on the ball. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to lift your butt up in the air, hold for about three to five seconds, and let it down. And if you cannot do 15 of these, where you lift your hips up into a straight line, hold for three to five seconds and let it down, this is as much as you go with this and do three sets of as many as you can do three days per week. But if you can do 15 of these and you find it not to be that challenging, great. We can move on to phase two, which is the same thing where you lift your hips up, keep your hips up and perfectly still as you bend your knees and straighten your knees back up. Do two or three of these and then you lower your hips down you to rest your legs, let them breathe a little bit, lift your hips back up, and do it again. And you basically do this until you can't do any more. You basically lift, do two to three, let it down. Lift, do two to three, let it down. Keep going. And you would want to do as many of those as you can three sets, three days per week. Now, what about if you don't have the ball? What you can do is put your heels down on paper plates. And with your feet on paper plates, with a little, on a soft, smooth floor, what you can do is lift your hips up and then drag your heels, both heels, towards your butt as you're keeping your uh, hips up and then you drag your heels back. And you basically do the same motion that you're doing with the ball, but just with your heels on paper plates. And uh, it's the same, same instructions with that as with the ball. Three sets, as many as you can do, three days per week. Hope this video is helpful for you. Take care.